Hey everybody and welcome back to Adam Makes Beer. My name is Adam and today we are doing the tasting for Holster. Holster is a beer that we have in cans at the old brewery. We are going to do the tasting and we are going to do the full recipe right now. So let's jump into it. I'm going to try to give real specific percentages. There might be a little wiggle room on each, on either direction with it. So do the best you can if this is a beer that, can, that you're going to try to recreate at home. I treat this base as a little bit of a faux stout for really any adjunct. I do like to pull some roast out of stouts when I'm making them, when I'm adding adjunct to them to allow the adjunct to shine a little bit more. And by faux stout, I mean for the roast malt on this, we are using like a carafe Special 2 or a Huskless to kind of pull back the roast character a little bit, but still leave all that dark color. So maybe a little atypically, we are using a few Wireman products off the top. We're using Wireman Munich 2 for 39.6% of the grist. We're using Vienna malt for 34.6% of the grist, and we're using Carafa Special 2 for 7.4% of the grist. Continuing on, we also use Simpson's Crystal Medium at 4.9%, and I use Flaked Oats for 4.5% of this beer. There's also, for me, 100 pounds of lactose that goes into the kettle, and so that means that for me, that's about 10% of all of that. So let's get into the tasting a little bit. One thing that we did not show is where we add hazelnut with this beer is we do add this as a TTB approved natural extract in the bright tank. But what I do try to do with the grist is I do try to build up kind of a unique nuttiness with the grain bill that I'm putting together. So that hazelnut just doesn't seem standalone over top. It kind of has like a nice nuttiness coming from the malt bill. So right off the top, you get kind of a soft roast, maybe like a subtle kind of cold brew type roast off the nose at cold brew coffee. And then I would say you get about a medium, medium low level of that Kind of, I always think of it as like a warm aroma. I don't know if it's so much at home here we make, my wife makes uh, half calf, half regular, half hazelnut, or half decaf, half hazelnut. And so it just has this warm feel to me for some reason, hazelnut does. It's just a little bit of an association there. But that nice, deep, kind of sweet, rich nuttiness from the hazelnut, I think right up front you kind of get that bump of sweetness. You get kind of an underlying nuttiness, toastiness from the grist. And then that hazelnut flavor really comes through from the mid palate on. There is an elevated level of sweetness in this beer. And that's because I have IBUs down and residual sweetness up as well as the use of lactose. So let's jump back to the recipe just a little bit more again. We did end up hitting 1070 on this beer for original gravity, and we went down to 1028. 1028 may seem high to you, but it's almost never enough residual sweetness for people. I would think to go back to those two different metrics. You can raise your final gravity, you can lower your IBU. Mess with those back and forth and see what how how you strike balance best for your palate and how you like to do that, okay? This beer does only have 21 IBU of either something like a clean bittering hop, a Magnum or Warrior at 60 minutes. I do like to not add later edition hops to a beer like this because I'm trying to feature the adjunct and not so much some late hop flavor or anything. If you prefer a little bit of late hop flavor, give yourself a 10, 20 minute edition, maybe of something noble in a beer like this and see how it works out for you. This beer was fermented with juice from Imperial, but I've also used Safale Dry 04, um, I've even used 05 on this beer. I would kind of lean to the British type beers because they tend to leave a little bit more residual sweetness. This beer does come out to 5.5% and 
Speaking of extract, we used the Apex Flavors Hazelnut Extract and I used 18 ounces in a 15 barrel batch. For me, this is the time of year for this. I don't know what time of year it is when you're watching it, but I'm recording this in December. And it just does have that big, full, rich, malty thing going on. It's one of the reasons it's stout season, baby. So I think you can take a base beer like this and use other adjuncts with it, whether you want it to be chocolate, coconut, um, I don't know, spices, winter, uh, winter time, like holiday type spices, Christmas type spices. I think there's an interesting base to do a lot of stuff with. It's not aggressively roasty, but it does have those subtle dark malt notes that kind of implies stout and then seeing the color, you know, it, it implies stout, right? But it's not the most aggressively roasted version of that. And sometimes pulling that roast back and inserting an adjunct can help that adjunct shine. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride on this brew day. As always, please give us a like, a share, subscribe. You can actually become a member to the YouTube channel right now. So check that out and check out the benefits that come along with that. And as always, share it with your beer-loving, craft beer-loving brewing friends. And I hope you have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>